Have you ever heard a radio with no inductor and no variable capacitor? Well, now you have. Keep watching to find out more about this unusual circuit. 50 or 60 years ago, there was a UK magazine called The Radio Constructor. It published some very interesting circuits. One of which was by G.A. French in the December 1971 issue. This was a simple transistor receiver for 200 kilohertz. Then a broadcast station, I think one of the BBC stations in the UK. This long wave receiver had two transistors but no inductors. Instead, use was made of a feedback loop that controlled the gain of the first transistor in the circuit. At a particular frequency, there was almost no effect, but at frequencies away from your desired frequency, there is very heavy negative feedback, reducing the gain of the stage down to about zero. Then the signal from that goes out to another transistor and then into a germanium dye detector and then off to an audio amplifier. So it was a very simple receiver, two transistors, oh and there was regeneration as well. You could adjust the voltage and when you had enough current going in then the thing would start to oscillate. I'll demonstrate that later on. The article was quite comprehensive, it was three pages, and mentioned the formula for working out the values for the feedback network. And not only could you get the radio to operate on the long wave frequency, on 200 kilohertz, but also on medium wave, if you followed the formulas. Or you could do what I did and put in some variable resistors. I'm using a dual gang pot here for one of the adjustments, and a single gang pot for the other and with those you can vary the frequency of the receiver so that could be useful for medium wave. Here's a little bit more about the parallel T filter circuit. You might have seen them in op amp circuits but in this receiver's case it's just used as a feedback network across from the base to the collector of a simple transistor. Basically, you know, it's like two T's, parallel T they're calling it. One T is made of two resistors and one capacitor, and the other T is made of two capacitors and one resistor. And as for the values, these two resistors are the same value. They're called RX and RY. These two capacitors as well, CX and CY. Down here you've got CZ, which is double the value of CX and CY. And conversely here you've got RZ, which is half the value of Rx and Ry. But in my case, I'm using variable resistors. I'm, I'm have, I've got the capacitors as fixed. The capacitors I've reduced in value. The original circuit had, for CX and CY, had a thousand picofarad, but that was for 200 kilohertz because I'm more interested in medium wave, I've reduced their values, I've just got 100 picofarad here, 100 here, I've used 220 down here, though it should really be 200, so you could just use two lots of 100, just put them in parallel, and then for the rest, RX and RY are the same, so I've just used a dual gang potentiometer there, maximum about 5k value, and for RZ, just a single potentiometer. So to tune this, it's a bit fiddly. You've got both potentiometers and the regeneration control. This isn't really a serious receiver. You will get stations on it, but it's not as selective as a tuned circuit. As for working out the values, here's the frequency in megahertz. It's one divided by two pi RX CX. And RX, it's in ohms, and if you have the capacitance in microfarads, then that's okay for the frequency to be in megahertz. 
in the original article that receiver was 200 kilohertz and RX was 800 ohm and CX was 1 nanofarad. My circuit is pretty much as described in the original except I've replaced the fixed components, the fixed resistors with variable resistors and changed some of the values slightly. But I'd really recommend looking at the original article and I'll include a link in the video description. If you want to really build this properly and not just as an experimental mock-up, be aware of component tolerances. Those in the T network are critical and it's suggested that 2% or better. One of the benefits of today's test equipment is that it's much easier to accurately measure capacitance than in the past. So even if you don't have nominally 2% tolerance components, just buy a bag of them and with any luck you'll find some that are close enough. The author suggests care with laying the receiver out. With the three stages in the circuit separated by 2 inches or 5 centimetres. That's to reduce coupling between them. The two transistor circuit will drive a pair of old fashioned high impedance headphones at a listenable volume, but otherwise I suggest having a dedicated audio amplifier to give you speaker reception. Now I'll point out the main components. This is the dual gang potentiometer, that's one of the tuning controls. This is another potentiometer, that's for the other resistance element that needs to be varied. This is the region control. And for the antenna, I initially tried this with my outdoor antenna, and it did work, it was quite strong, but I wasn't really able to select stations very well. Uh, this receiver works, and I think it's designed for a short wire antenna. So I've just got about three or four meters of wire indoors, just plugged into the antenna socket here. And with that, I can select stations. I can't hear all the local AM stations in Melbourne. I can just hear the strongest, but we'll have a tune around and see what we can hear. Right now, we're tuned to an ABC station um, down at one of them 774, another is 621. So have a listen, you won't find it as easy as a conventional receiver to tune as there's those multiple controls and I might need to touch the regen. Now it's not quite hand capacitance, but it's probably a good idea if I use a insulated knob as it's changing when I touch the control. But you can hear there's a peak here. Just adjust the regeneration. Now a little bit quieter. Now, I just adjusted this and there's another station coming in. Get a bit of torque there. Here we are. That 
just seem to lock in. As you can tell, the Blue Eyes station is the strongest here. And it can sometimes be difficult to remove it. Here's the regime. It's in its oscillating a bit. It doesn't. Now I'm just turning it back, and that's got a bit better. Try for that music. here we'll quite clearly select different stations Second shot. 
hole, but to overcome that issue nine out of the 17 holes was, was something to be proud of. Mr. Holland and Brooks Hepka are also on top of the leaderboard, while Jason Day is the best of the Australians two shots back. And North Melbourne is losing by the return of co-captain Jai Simpkin, as well as Luke Davies Uyak and Aidan Bonnet in this afternoon's clash with Carlton. Five past four, that's the latest news and sport. Holidays are here, and Bob Jane Sea Marts have great buy three, get one free, plus instant cash back deals. With 24 stores located in Melbourne, they'll look after you. Teeth and Tea Supply. 3MP traffic. G'day there, a crash in for Cranbourne and South Gippsland Highway at Cam's Road, causing a bit of grief, and another in Limbrook, not too far away, caused Evans Road at the South Gippsland Highway. An incident for the Monash inbound at Yarra Boulevard, left down lane closed and speed down to 40. Not too bad on the morning to finish the freeway. Bit of foot traffic though, in and around Marble Stadium, Wondry Way. Bit of time, grab a free medium Big Mac meal when you spend $30 or more on your first lick delivery order via the app. Value means more at Macca's. Available for a limited time at participating restaurants. TV supplies, the app and app details. The one on the cycle of Big Horse Racing with So that's the parallel T receiver. It does work. Not the greatest of selectivity, but it does prove that you don't need an inductor to be able to select signals with this unique circuit. Let me know what you think, and if you do build it, then share your results in the comments below.